Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do the project recipe for Revved Up. Revved Up is a collection that came out about a month ago. And this is a really fun collection, especially if you are into cars and motorcycles and that side of life. Um, there are lots of really great papers and embellishments. In fact, we have separate embellishment packs for different focus groups. Like if you're really into old cars and restoring old cars, there's an embellishment pack for that. If you're more into motorcycles, there's an embellishment pack for that. If you like just driving, then there's an embellishment pack for that. So lots of different focuses for that. And um, we're going to talk about all of those. I'm going to show them to you and we're going to do the project recipe. So let's check out my workspace and we'll get started. Oh, hang on. Before we get too far into our layout for today, I just want to remind you about the drawing that we're doing. We are going to be doing that pretty soon because we are really close to our goals. So please make sure that you are commenting so that you're entered in that drawing. And please make sure that you're sharing my channel with all of your paper scrapping friends so that we can get to that subscriber number that we need to so we can do the drawing. And when we do the drawing, there will be a special video that will be put out um, so you can see us draw the name and um, there'll be more information at that point in time. But if you need details on, the, on what we're doing and why we're doing it, check out the description of the video and there'll be plenty of information there to explain why we're doing this and what we're doing. All right, thanks so much. Let's check out my workspace and we'll get started now. Thanks. All right, so this is revved up and this is my workspace. And as I mentioned before, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you really quickly the um, embellishments at least. This is the power, this is the paper pack that we have to select from and some of these are very cool. Um, you've got lightning for power down here, you've got tire tracks, you've got more tire tracks, you've got um, different textural type papers which is cool. This one actually looks a lot like a um, the finish line flag, the, check, the checkered flag. Um, you've got tire, tire textured papers, so you know just a lot of different of different choices in this pack. Um, along with that, you get some really fun mats. Where the road ends, the fun begins is just one of them. Um, Life on wheels, a custom ride, lots of different journal boxes and things that are cool. You get the typical three sheets of stickers in the sticker pack. The one with lots of different great um, word stickers, off the road attitude, off the road attitude, off road attitude, sorry. Um, all terrain vehicle, a little dirt never hurt, you know, that kind of stuff that if you're into cars is not unfamiliar to you. And then all of these great stickers with the wrenches and tires and the road down here, which is very cool. Um, and then we've got these 12 inch stickers, which are also fun to play with as we create these layouts. So in addition to that, you also get a kind of a bonus. It's, I think it's sold separately, but um, not typically created for our collections is this clear sticker sheet. So um, you could put down these tire tracks on top of a cardstock and you'll see the colored cardstock through the tire track, which is kind of a neat element um, to be able to add these splotches of oil and what have you appropriately on your, on your layout. Those are cool. And then these are the four different embellishment packs. Because they are specialized, these are sold just for five dollars a piece because you don't have as many in each one. But you can see this is the classic car pack. It has all of these plus I think a couple more. I don't think they show all of them on the back. I may be wrong about that. This one is for motorcycles. So you've got the motorcycle rally and 
cool Harley Davidsons and other things like that. This one is the off-road embellishment pack, which is kind of a cross between the two. But you've got a quad down here and the and the motorcycle and just regular um, just some tires up here, but a helmet down here also, which is cool. Then you've also got the car racing embellishments, which is fun because this one has all the checkered flags and the racy race cars and stuff like that. So depending on what part of cars and the revved up series you are into might have an influence as to how you would do this project recipe. This project recipe calls for two base sheets. So I pulled two sheets out of my pack of papers. They're just these gray kind of um, tire hubcap kind of sheets. And then the back side looks a little bit like um, the steel plating that you see on some um, reinforcing some tailgates and stuff like that. Um, then we've got this one, which I, I'm going to use today, which, because I'm partial to red anyway, so I really liked this one. Um, I just thought it was cool. And this one has the checker, checker back. Then you are going to need a piece of cardstock. And they, um, I don't know if they recommend a specific color in here, but they do on this sheet, no. This sheet just says cardstock. So you can pick whatever co color cardstock you want to use. And I pulled out two sheets of cardstock to choose from. I have the cool gray and the charcoal. So if you've been around CM for very long, then you might have the charcoal in your stash. I think cool gray is what we currently carry um, in the line, but you might have some charcoal stashed away somewhere. And so if you'll notice, the cool gray actually is almost exactly the same color as the gray that's in this paper. So I kind of think I don't want to use cool gray because I want my punched piece, which is what we're, we're going to use the cardstock for, to stand out a bit more. So I'm going to use charcoal instead of cool gray, but I wanted you to see how, how it matches exactly the color in this paper. And then you can make your own decisions as to whether you want to use cool gray or something else in your stash. So anyway, we're going to use charcoal today for this particular layout. And this is going to come together very quick and easy because we only have two sheets to mess with. We're going to cut and punch our cardstock. We're going to cut a little bit of our designer paper, this one with the red on it. And then we're going to get everything mounted up. So we are also going to use this cool border maker cartridge that came out. That's the tire tracks border maker cartridge. I'll flip it over so you can see the other side. And so that's going to be fun to do as well. Really more of, I think a motorcycle tire track than a car tire or truck tire track, but that's okay. I got my permanent and my repositionable adhesive out because once we punch this, it'll be so much easier to use the repositionable adhesive to get that all squared away. So let's get my trimmer out. I'm gonna keep these top two sheets on my desktop and set my base pages to the side. Grab my trimmer. And we're going to go ahead and start with our designer paper. Okay, so you can see on the project recipe instructions, we need two sheets, two strips that are three by 12. This is a non-directional paper, so I don't really have to worry about which way I have it going. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in just this, just this way. And we're gonna cut two three by 12 pieces. Three by 12. Okay, then we're going to turn this and we're gonna cut because three and three is six, right? So the, re the rest of this is a six inch piece. So I'm just gonna turn this horizontally and move it to the four inch mark and go ahead and cut. 
And then again to the four inch mark and cut. And then I'm gonna take this last piece and I'm gonna turn it back so that it's horizontal. And we're going to cut it into two three by four pieces to mat some smaller photos. All right, so we've got those done. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our charcoal paper, our cardstock. We're also going to cut this into two three by 12 pieces. So here's one, and I'm gonna set this to the right hand side of my trimmer as I cut them because I'm gonna be needing to punch. So here's two three by 12 pieces. We're gonna leave those there. And now we are going to take this remaining six by 12 piece. And again, we're gonna turn it horizontally and we're gonna cut two, cut these into two four by six mats. So four and four, and then we've got our two four by six mats. Then we're gonna turn this one back horizontally and cut it again at three. So we have two three by four pieces. All right, and those will just go over there for the time being. We are done with our trimmer, so go ahead and set it aside and grab one of those base, oh, no, don't grab your base sheet. We have some punching to do, I forgot. All right, so we are going to, and here's what I wanted to look at before, and of course, I got excited and jumped into this before I checked. I'm gonna look at the instructions down here and just check really quickly because the cutting guide says cut then punch the border. Well, normally that would mean that we would slide this in and cut and punch it right along that straight edge. But I'm not really sure that that's what they want us to do. I just wanna double check it really quickly. So it says here, Use the tape runner to adhere pieces A and B, which are the printed pages. And then it says place piece G on an angle. Up here it had said, use the tire tracks border maker cartridge with the original border maker system to punch one 12 inch edge of pieces G and H. Then we're placing piece G on an angle on top of piece A we must be just gonna trim off the over flow. Trim off the overhanging paper. Yep, okay. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna punch this straight across. I was envisioning cutting this on an angle and trying to fit it into my border maker system and all kinds of horrible dreams I was having about how this was gonna come together. Okay, here we go. We're gonna just punch and slide. Punch and slide. Okay, there's one. Now we're gonna do the second one. Love my border maker system. If you love your border maker system, leave me a comment and tell me how much you love that and what your favorite cartridge is. I would love to know. Those of you who've been using it for a while probably have a few of these cartridges in your arsenal. They keep coming out with cute ones and I'm gonna need another one of these turnabouts that holds 80, much to my husband's chagrin. All right, uh, let's see. We are going to, now that we have these punched, we are ready to assemble. So I'm just going to set this over here to the side because it works better for me so that you can see it and I can work. I'm going to grab a base sheet. I'm going to grab one of my 3x12s of my designer paper, one of my 3x12s of my cardstock that's punched, and we'll come back to the um, mats in just a second as soon as we have these all squared away. So I'm going to use my permanent adhesive and I'm just going to put it in five spots down the 12 inch side. I put about a half an inch of adhesive roughly. It's not an exact science. Half an inch of adhesive 
I put it in each corner, in the middle, and in between. And so you end up with five spots that have adhesive on each edge, and I find that that works pretty well for me. So um, don't waste your adhesive by going all the way across the 12 inches with your um, with your your tape runner because um, you don't need to. This adhesive is really strong. It's archival quality. It's going to last a long time. No need to waste it. Okay, so I'm just adding repositionable adhesive. Repositionable adhesive because I have lots of holes and this is a dot adhesive if you're not familiar with it. So it really behaves much better um, if you or, I mean, you're, you have a lot less stress, I guess I should say, if you um, go ahead and use that when you're trying to adhere something with a lot of holes in it. You'll be happier. And everyone around you will be happier too. Okay, so I, as you can see, I've lined up the corner with this center. This will be the center of my layout. And I am just laying that down right over the top. So you probably don't need to put adhesive all the way to the end because you can see how this end is going to get trimmed off. Right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get the other page done that far and then we'll trim off the overhang. So here's the other piece of my base sheet. We're going to just go ahead again and put five spots of adhe adhesive down and I sometimes I just put a little tiny bit on the edges you don't have to it's up to you but um, sometimes I do so what well, another thing I would love to hear in the comments on this video is um, and I'm just going to line this up. Hang on, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. I'm going to line this up and kind of determine which way my tires are going so that it's making sense and I'm not going against the grain backwards like this. That would not make sense to me. So this one's going to go this way. So my adhesive needs to go this way. Um, another thing I would love to hear in the comments of this video if you are game to play along with our drawing and um, and make a comment. I would love to hear what other border maker cartridges you might choose to use with this layout. Because you know project recipes are not only for the layout that they are designed for. You can use them with any collection and any border maker cartridge or punch. So I would love to know which ones you think would be cool to use uh, with this layout and give everybody some other ideas. Okay, so I'm just going to line this up in my trimmer, lining it up with the cutting line. So the edge of my paper is lined up right with the cutting line. If you don't trust yourself to be able to do that, then, and I need to adjust mine so that I can actually close my trimmer at the top. If you don't trust yourself to be able to do that, that's okay. Just grab your favorite pair of scissors and trim it off. All right. Sometimes it's not a matter of you not trusting yourself. Sometimes it's a matter of not being able to see where the cutting line is. And I get it. I totally do. So whatever is easiest for you is what I want you to do. And look at that. I somehow didn't give it enough pressure at the top. So my cardstock was still stuck. Okay. So here is the right side of the layout. And we'll just trim up this left side and I'm going to go back and make sure my adhesive is where it needs to be because sometimes if you're not sure how much you're going to be trimming off 
and you're trying to not waste your adhesive, sometimes you don't get it in the right place. And mine is clearly not quite where it should be. All right, so lining this up. There we go. All right, so putting my charmer back away. And this will be this side, this will be this side, and let's go back in here with our repositionable adhesive. Because you can see the edge of my punched piece is sticking up and I don't want that to catch on things. So I'm just going to make sure that that's stuck down. This side looks okay. And then let's make sure that the corner is stuck down as well because I didn't put any adhesive there. I was more concerned with the, with the punched part. All right, so that's down and that's down. Okay, so let's take a look at these mats and how they want us to, or how they suggest that we go ahead and place our mats. I'm just gonna scoot this up just a little so I can put this more in frame for you. There we go, all right. So we can actually see from this image, this sketch down here, we can see which pieces need to go where. So they've got a small one of these up here, a small cardstock one next to it. They've got a, a regular size 4x6 here and a 4x6 cardstock down here horizontally. And then on this side, we've got a cardstock that's 4x6 towards the top, and this one underneath it. And then we've got the designer paper up top and the cardstock below it. Okay, so in the meantime though, before we put those down, I just want to point out that right here in the middle where this seam comes together, they also have placed a sticker. And it, that actually looks like the clear sticker this clear track sticker. And I didn't consider which one of those we ought to use. So let's get those out and take a look and make a decision. All right, so we've got these clear ones. Which might be interesting to put across there definitely would show up on the gray because we would put them across on top of the edge not over the not um, not over the seam but above the seam then we've got these we can choose from as well these I'm not too keen about because they have a little more brown in them than what I've used what I've chosen to use in this layout so I would lean more towards these or possibly these. But also, I should mention, because I just realized that I didn't do it, when you look at your project recipe cutting guide, you can see that on these two pieces, which are your designer mats, they're meant to be reversed. That means they mean for you to flip them over which would make this look like so. And if we did that, then I think I'd be more inclined to go ahead and use these checkered, um, this checkered sticker across there because it would match this. What should we do? I actually think I like that. Although this one pulls out the, the pattern in this, but we're not going to see that because there's going to be a photo there. We will see it down here. I think I'm going to go with the checkers and we're going to, going to jazz it up that way. So I'm going to take a 12 inch sticker 
and it's just going to go right on top typically when we do this we go ahead and mask that edge by adding the sticker over the edge but this time around I'm just going to go ahead and set it on the top edge of that right along the top. I like that a lot. So we'll go ahead and do this one. So just lean that edge right up against the paper and it'll be nice and straight. Okay, so now we can go ahead and adhere our mats. So I'm going to go ahead and use my repositionable adhesive. If you know that you have pictures that will fit in all these spots, then by all means use your permanent adhesive. But I don't know yet what I'm going to end up using this for, so I'm just going to temporarily place these and then that way I can adjust them if I need to. All right, so let me just pull out the design one more time so we can see a little bit better the spacing. So they have this mat sitting down a little bit farther. It's about an inch from the sticker down here if that helps you to guide you where it should go. Roughly an inch and then roughly a half inch from the center edge over here. Okay, and that ought to help with placement. They have a gap, a little more of a gap on top than you'll see on this, on the right hand side of the layout, because they've got an embellishment there or a title um, would go there. So you just want to make sure you allow enough space for that. Okay, this is going to go about the same width. I want this to be the same as this. Okay, so I, and I don't want it to touch my punched piece down here. Okay, so there's that one. Then we'll just put, stick these two on. I always forget that I really don't have to flip the cardstock over. I could just go ahead and all right, that'll work. Okay. You know what I mean? Are you one of those that flips the cardstock over? I think I've asked that before on my channel because it's just such a phenomenon to me <laughs> that we all tend to flip that over. Okay, let's check out where this one's going to line up. I'm not going to line up these photos with this, but I want it to be roughly, um, roughly the same as the layout is showing. So I am, I am about an inch, maybe inside of an inch, maybe more like seven eighths of an inch from the edge on this edge with that. And then this will have the same half inch between I stuck that right back down. Okay, and then this will have a half inch here and a half inch here. So let's see, I'm gonna place this top one first. It'll make it easier for me because I need it to be the same, at the same height as this mat over here so that it looks nice and straight. And with, with this geometric um, checker over here it's kind of throwing my eye off. All right, then we're going to just make sure that our borders are the same in between these photos as well. 
All right, so those are down. Now we just need some embellishments and we are done. So let's check this out. All right, so I've chosen a few stickers that we can use to um, embellish these pages. I'm not gonna go ahead and use the embellishment packs because in truth, I am not super into um, the car scene. I like to go to car shows and things like that, but I'm not, um, I'm not what you'd call knowledgeable about that kind of stuff. It's not really a passion for me. Um, I do have some family members though who really enjoy it and they have some fantastic classic cars and have done a really, really nice job of restoring them. Um, they've become like family members. <laughs> As I'm sure you well know if you are into that scene. Um, when you spend that much time working on a vehicle it becomes like a member of the family which I totally understand. Um, okay, so what I did was I took this road sticker and added it to the side of Born to be Wild and then just added a little flame over there because I thought that would be cute. And that's going to go right up here as kind of a title. And because I'm lifting it up off the page, I can slide my photo in there right underneath and it won't be an issue. Then I'm going to, um, let's check out and see where they've placed the other embellishments on their version here. They've got one between these guys, so right here. They've got another one here underneath what they are using as a journal box, which could be a photo, could be a journal box, depends on what you want to use it for. And then they've got another one down here. I'm thinking that for me, I would probably put one right here, oh pardon me, excuse me, put one right here and then put another one where they have this over here. So I chose these, this sticker that has three tires on it and this sticker that says all-terrain vehicle. I'm going to pop this all-terrain vehicle sticker up using some foam squares. So I'm just going to add those on the back and then we'll um, give it a little bit of depth by adding that. I'm going to kind of put it in the middle there. And then I've got this other sticker right here that's kind of a kind of a cog or it I don't think it's meant to be a hubcap, but I don't know. Again, I am not a car person. So going to just add that in. And because this is going to go in this spot right here, I think maybe I'll just add it kind of on top right there. Maybe. Sticking down in there just a little. Okay, so that's going to go right here. And should fit okay. So I was thinking, what, what could I use this for since I am not a gear, a gear head. That's what we used to call them in high school. Um, people who were really into cars were called gearheads, affectionately. Um, since I'm not really one of those kind of people, I, I was thinking I could use this layout for, um, for maybe like a race. So we recently, um, just last year, had an activity at church where we did a version of the amazing race and one of the members of our ward of our um, church said that she and her family do amazing race amazing races that they create themselves all the time it's like a main family activity <laughs> and I thought oh that's awesome what a fun thing and it actually turned out so well we really enjoyed ourselves as we put it all together and the people who came to the activity really enjoyed themselves and 
it was it was just a lot of fun for everybody. Um, we served refreshments that you would get like at a refreshment stand at a raceway or something like that, which was fun. So I took these two crisscross checker flags and the go 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 sticker and this cute little um, like winner's cup and I'm just kind of creating my own little I'm creating a cluster but just kind of creating my own little winner's circle kind of thing and then I'm just going to pop this up with some foam squares as well so that it is off off the page and um, emphasized just a little bit more. Whenever possible, I like to put my foam squares over a joint. So where my embellishment stickers or not sticker embellishments are coming together on the back is where I will tend to um, choose to put my foam squares. It's not always possible, sometimes it doesn't work out, but that's what I try to do in general. I feel like it kind of adds a little bit of stability to the layout and holds everything together just that much better. All right, so this one's gonna go, I'm gonna actually put it down here a little bit more so that these checkered flags don't get lost in our cool border. And because it's popped up, I can overlap it just a little on the corner of this mat and the photo will still be able to go underneath it. I think I set that down a little crooked. Drat. Let's see if we can fix that. There. All right. So I believe we have come to the end of another session. Let's check this out. I'm going to remove this so that we can see. Oop, I didn't adhere this. That's another reason for picking things up, right? Okay, let's go ahead and peel the stickies off of this one and get this stuck down. All right. So this one I'm going to key kind of off, off to the side. When you place your embellishments, it's really best if you place them as if you're envisioning a grid on your paper, like, like for tic-tac-toe. So two lines going down this way, two lines going a horizontal this way, and then you place, you try to place your embellishments where those lines intersect. And then that helps your eye as you're looking through, looking at the pictures, it guides your eye across the page so that you see everything and your eye doesn't just stop in one area. Hopefully that is helpful. What do you think? Let me, let, let me know what you think about this layout. I think it turned out much better than I was expecting it to. I really wasn't sure how this one was going to going to look, but I'm really much more excited about it having put it together. Um, and I hope that this is something that you can put together and get excited about too. It's a fun collection and I hope that it's something that you can use for you, for your own use, for your sons, for your grandsons, whoever it is that you might be, um, might be doing this, doing your pages for at this time. I hope this is helpful. And this is a great layout for using another punch. So I would love to know what other punch you might use here. Don't forget to comment so I can enter you in the drawing. We're getting really close to our first drawing as I'm recording this. So hopefully um, by the end of uh, the week or right around the time that this is airing, we will have had our first drawing. I'm so excited getting closer all the time. So subscribe and like and share the video and leave me a comment so I can enter you in the drawing. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, I hope you have many more creative moments. Have a great day now. Mm -hmm.